back to uh, to WWE in the I guess it would have been around ninety seven maybe. Or yeah, I I'd, I'd been back for one Royal Rumble or something, and yeah. then then they called me back and and I did the Billy Gunn thing. <laughs> I did commentary for a while with Lawler and Ross, and that was his, uh, that commentary wasn't so bad. But Vince Russo was in charge backstage then, and they brought me back to do uh, uh, the search for the next greatest Intercontinental Champion. And, and for four months, I couldn't find one, which drug on forever. Uh, I mean, everyone remembers the search. They don't. The search went it. forever, but then finally, uh, you know, they said, "Okay, we got the guy for you, it's Billy Gunn." So I go to Billy and I say, Billy, what have they been doing with you out here? He said, I've been doing jobs for the, for Rocky and Flash Funk, that's The Rock, every night in the first match for the last year. I said, well, that's really great. I don't know how I have, what we can do here. Then Jim Ross says, uh, we really need to get him over. I want you to go on the road in the house shows. I said, Jim, working the first match with Flash Funk and The Rock ain't going to get him over. He's got to get over on TV. You put the guy over on TV, Jim, you know that. He says, well, you know, that's not my call. I said, well, how am I going to be paid? I'm not on contract. He says, well, you know, managers don't get paid like wrestlers. He said, but call me on Monday. I said, yeah, right. So I gave my notice. So uh, did you really have anything against Billy Gunn? Or no. You thought it was just kind of a... Like, it, it was something that didn't work. Billy, knew, Billy didn't want to do it, and he knew it wouldn't work because he was trying to establish himself as a single wrestler because he'd been in tag so long. And for me to be out there in this flashy outfit, they got him dressed in blue jeans again with a, yeah, and a, yeah, it was it was not good for either one of us. Was that one of Vince Russo's creations? I I don't know who came up with it. Their their original idea was to have uh, Savio Vega, which would have made even less sense. Yes, and and Savio was excited about it. I I think to this day Savio might think that I heard about it and went to him and told told him I don't want Savio, but. Savio might have been better. He at least yeah, he wasn't he getting had a good attitude. he wasn't getting beat every night on the first match. He was with Los Bericos at the time, and they were doing pretty good. What was the biggest difference in the WWE, the locker room, and the whole atmosphere in the WWE that time around, as opposed to the '80s and early '90s? Totally different. I mean, it was not it was not completely different as as it is now. Uh, it was different though in the fact that guys had contracts uh guys there wasn't as much camaraderie as we had uh it was still pretty much the same but i think the contract situation and the, the influence of wcw had had brought an, a, a a change of atmosphere because they had some wcw guys there then uh, they had to, I think Eddie Guerrero was there by then and, and, uh, some more guys, a couple more. So there was a WCW kind of an influence of, you know, Hey, they give us a script. We go out and read it. We study and we go do it. Uh, it wasn't as much off the cuff camaraderie fun that we had. Uh, nowadays it's terrible, I guess.